Hi everyone, I'm Josh. Um, since I have relatively little time, I'll just jump straight into the talk. So short summary, what is modular politics? Well, it's a conceptual framework for online governance that imagines digital platforms and software applications as the building blocks of diverse governance systems, uh, especially online governance systems. Uh, it's worth now noting that while modular politics is indeed a conceptual framework and a conceptual model, uh, it's also essentially kind of a white paper for work, more practical work that is currently being implemented at the Meta Governance Project, which is a collective effort involving many of the co-authors here, as well as uh, other folks, other researchers. Now, reading the actual paper, uh, you'll find there it's kind of broken into four sections. Uh, at the very top, there is a discussion of, well, what's the motivation here? It's really to support bottom-up kinds of governance experimentation across a wide range of online communities. How can we support that governance experimentation? Well, we want to build a governance layer, uh, and we want to articulate what we mean by that and the kind of requirements that that governance layer should respect, including things like modularity and expressiveness. Uh, we've defined, go on to then define a data model, which kind of organizes that governance layer, organizes both software and experiments within that. Uh, and finally, we connect all of the above to a set of conjectures and sort of social science uh, concepts uh, which we'll get to shortly. So the conjecture from Eleanor Ostrom uh, and her collaborators at the Ostrom Workshop at Indiana uh, is that there exists a set of shared and essential building blocks from which any governance systems can be built. And here, when I say governance system, I mean a set of persistent mechanisms and institutions that regulate the behavior of a set of agents. Now, normally I would give a little bit more background to the slide, um, but for Ostrom, those primitive building blocks were actions or what she called action situations. And action situations really, um, well, in this case, the key thing to note is that action situations are actually already a certain kind of modular architecture or way of thinking about a given social situation. So it breaks it down into things like actors and positions, costs and benefits and potential outcomes. Uh, and this is already a kind of modular architecture and it supports modifications to those modules essentially uh, via things like boundary rules for actors, position rules for positions, scope rules for potential outcomes and so on. And this is important because uh, it's gonna be useful for defining the data model that we are working on trying to apply in an online setting. And this data model starts with uh, something that's much more germane to the online uh, instance, though you'll see reflections of it, of course, uh, in even offline settings. Uh, but the code in which an online community lives, the platform, so these are, as well as the instances and orgs, these are all computational environments. So the platform specifically represents comp underlying computational infrastructure like Facebook, Slack, or Discourse. The instance is an instance of modular politics how it define, implemented, whether as you know, perhaps a hosted client or as a server somewhere or as a protocol. Uh, an org finally is matches more our traditional intuitions for a, let's say, hosted online community in which people interact. These are things like Facebook groups or subreddits on Reddit, uh, a game guild in a game like World of Warcraft or EVE Online, or even uh, DAOs uh, on the blockchain. Modules are configurable software packages. Uh, you can think reputation modules or voting modules or identity modules uh, or treasury management modules uh, that can alter the behavior of processes and programs that run within an instance or org. Uh, and a module's editable configuration options, well, like whether you choose voting to be simple majority or super majority are called policies. Monitors are read-only modules that provide feedback uh, to a community. And the, our intent here is to try to capture the fact that, well, in practice, governance is still very much run 
even in online communities, governance is still very much dominated by cultural uh, and kind of soft forms of governance, like norms. And those are things that software you know, is not really capable of producing uh, on its own. What we think of monitors are really ways in which software uh, can really contribute to culture in ways that you know, provide feedback uh, and give people a sense of where the organization is going and how to respond. Operational entities are, you know, these are relatively straightforward uh, users, uh, as well as resources, uh, i.e. objects and actions, including things like docs that users can affect and govern. Uh, and finally, permissions. Uh, so this is just a special part of every module instance or org. Uh, in some sense, you can realize this as its own module, uh, but we want to lift this up, out, and up as a first-class entity, just because it's such an important part of traditional forms of online governance. And finally, just to put these images side by side and give you a sense of how uh, many of the items on the left diagram um, that we're articulating within this data model uh, really are, you can think of as instances uh, or you know, uh, connect or cohere with something on the right from the original action situations. Though, of course, we do have more things here that are a bit more explicit about the computational uh, aspects um, that are germane to the platform setting. And while I won't be, go over the, all these examples, um, because it's mainly due to time constraints, uh, really the point here is to illustrate that there's these governance systems can get quite complex. Um, and more than that, they are often, there's a lot of variation in how they can be designed, both within a single platform as well as across multiple platform types like games, social networks, and uh, in this case, open source governance. And that kind of motivates uh, the idea of building a governance layer that's filled with, let's say, a set of portable modular applications that are all interoperable with each other and allow you to produce these, this wide, wide variation of possible governance systems. So I mentioned already things like modularity uh, and portability. Um, Expressiveness is just the idea that the governance layer should implement, be able to implement things, everything from democracy to autocracy to sociocracy to futarchy and all the different kind of um, forms of governance that we traditionally expect. And finally, interoperability is just trying to allow different applications, especially even, even applications built on different platforms to, to some degree interact with each other, to be able to communicate with each other. Of course, this is really important for communities that live on multiple platforms. Uh, so something that community that might use both Facebook and Telegram and Discord. Uh, and this actually happens quite often for uh, any reasonably complex online community. Uh, and finally, we go the, in the paper, we go into some discussion of different implementation strategies and how modular politics uh, as a conceptual model might show up in practice and within different implementations. And those implementations might range anywhere from traditional mod managers for online games. Uh, like all, uh, in the top left, you see uh, multi-MC, which is a mod manager for Minecraft, to things like Reddit's auto mod on the top right, um, which is really just a, a menu which you can write raw code, uh, to more robust kind of UIs like that for Lumio, which is a voting platform. And finally, just going back to the beginning, uh, how do we actually support bottom-up governance experimentation uh, across a wide, wide range of settings? And this range of settings includes everything from games, such as Lambda Moo, to democratic governance and peer production in things like Wikipedia, to, of course, new kinds of experiments that are being run, uh, even within the confines of these walled gardens like Facebook or Twitch or Twitter. Uh, as well as exciting new experiments that are being uh, run on blockchain, on the blockchain, uh, in the form of, for example, DAOs or decentralized autonomous organizations. And, we're, and I guess the point of the slide, uh, besides motivating um, the rest of the development, is really to sort of show that there's already a wide range of experiments happening in online governance. So we're really hoping to expand and improve those experiments uh, 
across the internet in all sorts of different platforms and online communities. Uh, there's many, as I mentioned, this is uh, at the very beginning of this talk, this is very much an ongoing project involving um, many researchers and research groups. A lot of the engineering research is centered currently on Medigov, which is a unified API gateway for governance services and applications. You can see more docs.medigov.org. Um, there's a growing research community uh, where we're trying to work on and steady the usage of these governance tools. And finally, we're conducting empirical research where we're trying to collect data on the, this kind of tool usage across online communities uh, from blockchains to uh, Facebook groups. And you can see that through DevBase, governance archeology span and other allied efforts. Lastly, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Prima, Seth, Nathan and Amy, which without whom I this absolutely would never have happened. And I've had such a wonderful full time learning from. Okay, with that, thank you very much for your time and look forward to your questions.